Christy, and I'm your host for session three of Boot Camp, Getting Sauced. Sauces are a quick and easy way to add really bright flavor and texture to all sorts of dishes, from chicken and fish, to hearty grilled meats and roasted vegetables. A simple no-cook sauce can really elevate any of these. And I'm gonna show you my three favorite ones today. So the first, the mother of all simple sauces is vinaigrette. Once you understand the ratios involved in vinaigrette, the world is your oyster in terms of flavor. So when I say vinegar, I mean any kind of vinegar. I have a pretty stocked pantry at this point. We've got balsamic, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, rice vinegar, a bottle of sherry vinegar, and then you got citrus because when we talk about vinegar, we're really talking about acid. And so we need something nice and sharp that's going to balance out the oil that goes in. Now, speaking of oil, I make most of my vinaigrettes with extra virgin olive oil because that's what I have handy. You wanna make sure that you're getting a good quality oil because especially in a vinaigrette, it's raw. So all the flavor is going to come out. The other component is some kind of an emulsifier, which basically just keeps these two diametrically opposed ingredients together. Um, it's like gives them a big warm hug. <laughs> and so that can be Dijon mustard is definitely a good emulsifier and a flavor booster. We also like to add mayonnaise. We found that mayonnaise and molasses are both great ingredients that help your dressing come together and stay together. What we're always talking about is three to one. So that's three parts of olive oil or three parts of oil to one part vinegar. I tend to like a slightly punchier vinaigrette, and so sometimes I go a little bit higher on the vinegar, but that's up to you. But I think starting with a three to one ratio is the good place to start. So um, just to keep things simple, I'm just gonna go in terms of tablespoons. So I'll add one tablespoon of cider vinegar, and I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon. So. Um, the mustard is an emulsifier, but it's also a flavoring agent. So if you're looking for a mustardy vinaigrette, then add a little bit more. That was about half a teaspoon. Um, if you're, you know, if you just want the mustard there for a little backbone, then, you know, stick to the smaller amount. And mayonnaise is a really fantastic ingredient because, you know, uh, mayonnaise is made up of eggs. Egg yolks are a fantastic emulsifier, and because it's already in mayonnaise, which has been pasteurized, you don't have to worry about raw eggs, um, but you get all the benefits here. In addition to those three things, that's where you can play around. I'm just gonna add a little salt, a little pepper, and now we go to work. I need three tablespoons of oil because I used one tablespoon of vinegar, and because I wanna drizzle this, I'm actually gonna measure it out into a measuring cup so I can pour it, and that'll just be a little bit easier. And since I'm doing this one-handed, uh, it's good to have something to help stabilize your bowl. So I've taken a kitchen towel, and I just twisted it up, and I'm gonna use this to make a little nest for my bowl so it doesn't, you know, run around the counter on me while I'm trying to whisk it with one hand. So, um, whisking, you wanna do kind of a back and forth motion instead of, instead of a circular motion. That's gonna kind of help break up the mayonnaise. It's also going to help the oil and the vinegar mix together more easily. Okay, once you get that kind of mixed together, I'm gonna to start streaming my oil in pretty slowly just to see that it all gets incorporated making lots of noise now. And you don't want to add all of the oil at once because you kind of have to coax the oil into that emulsion. All right. You know, taste it for seasoning. You might need to add a little more, a little more salt or pepper. Taste it on a piece of the thing you're gonna serve it on. So if you're serving your vinaigrette on on hearty greens, dip one of the greens into the sauce to taste it, and that's gonna give you the best indicator of how 
balance the sauces. Next up, herb sauce. Now, herb sauce is really just a pumped up vinaigrette in a lot of ways, except now we're putting herbs center stage. So we're gonna start out naturally with a bunch of fresh herbs. And I mean a bunch, a lot. We're talking about, you know, a cup, probably at least. And um, depending on the sauce you wanna make, you can mix and match your herbs. I'm making tremula, which you might not be familiar with. If you're not, you should, cause it's awesome and it's really easy. So I've got cilantro here. And cilantro is one of the few herbs that we actually like the stems and the leaves. I'm also going to add some garlic. Uh, and you know, once you know how to make this, you don't have to, like I said, you can riff, you can mix and match the different styles of herb sauces. We've done um, mint persiades, we've done red chimichurris, we've elaborated on persiade and added capers and anchovies and all sorts of fun stuff. So <laughs> once you have the basics, you can mess around with it. I'm also going to add some cumin. Start with a little, you can always add more, can't take away. I'm also adding some paprika. And just a little bit of cayenne. Now I've got some lemon juice. This is gonna be my acid, and I'm not messing around here. The proportions for your oil and acid are a little closer to two to one when it comes to an herb sauce, because the name of the game is really big, bold flavor. So you're gonna want more of a punch of acidity than you might want with your vinaigrette. That's, think about it, vinaigrette's gonna go on leafy greens, grain salads, kind of more delicate things generally. An herb sauce, you're gonna wanna put that on you know, grilled meats, roasted vegetables, things where you want more of a punch. Now I'm gonna put this to work in the food processor. You could also just chop the herbs really finely. You're gonna get more of a relishy texture than a sauce texture, but that's fine. And if that's what you have or you don't feel like, washing the food processor, go for it. So I'm just gonna pulse this a couple times to get it all mixed up. So the difference between tremula and pesto, I'm not putting nuts in it, I'm not putting cheese in it, and it's gonna be a little looser than most pestos, but the idea is the same. And what's in a name? I mean, you don't have to call it any one of these sauces. It's an herb sauce. So, you know, pesto, persiad, if it tastes good to you, go for it. All right, now I have oil that I'm gonna add, but when we're using extra virgin olive oil and the food processor, oftentimes we like to add it after we've processed everything because the food processor can make the oil taste a little bitter. So especially if you're working with a really good olive oil, you might want to do the same and just add it um, at the end after you've processed everything. So I have, this is um, about half a cup of oil and I added a whole lemon, which can be you know three to four tablespoons of juice. So that's a little closer to a two to one ratio. We're not creating an emulsion so much as we did with the vinaigrette because it's really the, the minced herbs are gonna hold everything together. So you can see it's, it's a, a pretty loose sauce. Add a little salt. And you've got something really awesome to drizzle over your kebabs, your grilled meats, or pretty much anything. I mean, halloumi, that would be good too. Herb sauce. Finally, we're gonna talk about creamy sauces. Now these can be as simple as starting with sour cream and working some ingredients into it. But my favorite thing to do is make an immersion mayonnaise because obviously you can use it on sandwiches. You can make salad dressing out of it. You can use it as a dipping sauce and you can add flavor in different ways. You just need to know again, the ratio. So one is the name of the game here. We're using one cup of vegetable oil, one egg, which can hold a whole cup of vegetable oil and one tablespoon of vinegar. Now I'm gonna use sherry vinegar here because we're gonna make this a little fancy, but you could use any kind of vinegar you want. 
Um, you could also use a tablespoon of lemon juice if you'd prefer that. So I'm adding these to my two cup measuring cup. I'm gonna use an immersion blender for this and we wanna make sure that you're using something that has high sides. You don't wanna use a big wide bowl because we need to keep all the ingredients close together. So I'll add my egg and my tablespoon of acid. For extra flavor, I'm also gonna add a little Dijon. So that's about half a teaspoon. And then I'll do about half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I can always add more later. And I just wanna give this a whisk with my fork. Now, obviously you can make mayonnaise by hand. Everyone in culinary school has done it. I've made it a million times, but it takes a long time. And you know, you're whisking using one hand, pouring with the other. It's kind of laborious. And that, I think that's why I don't make it very often. This is gonna take about two minutes, maybe, tops. Let's see. So I'm gonna put my immersion blender down into the measuring cup, and then I'm gonna pour my oil around it. And here I'm using vegetable oil. When you're making mayonnaise, I know classic aioli is extra virgin olive oil, but that's a really olivey mayo, super pungent. And that might not be what you want all the time. So I kind of like a half and half split. If you want to use some olive oil, use half extra virgin, half vegetable oil. Now I'm gonna start and wait until the mayonnaise starts to combine. We start to get an emulsion. So this is just a step further from vinaigrette, really, if you think about it. A lot more oil, a lot less acid. You can see it's starting to get creamy there on the bottom. So now I'm just gonna start lifting the mixer up and down. Very gently, not all the way out. I just wanna introduce more oil into the bottom. You can see it's getting really, really creamy. And we're done. We have mayo, yep. So you can slather that on your sandwich or you can you know, take a little more creative approach and maybe add some chipotles to it or add a little pesto in there. And you have all sorts of sauce combinations. This is your base for tartar sauce, for ramelade. Um, you know, add a little lemon juice, add some lemon zest. You've got a nice dipper for fried fish. The world is your oyster, creamy sauce. And there you have it. Three easy, no cook sauces guaranteed to add flavor and punch to your foods. Thanks for joining me.